Assalamu alaikum students. This is your teacher Muhammad Umar Khatak for the subject project management and this is our 26th lecture and today we'll be starting chapter number 8, scheduling. Background. A schedule is the conversion of a project action plan into an operating timetable. As such, it serves as the basis for in monitoring and controlling project activity and taken together with a plan and budget is probably the major tool for the management of projects. In a project environment, the scheduling function is more important than it would be in an ongoing operation because projects lack the continuity of day-to-day -day operations and often present much more complex problems of coordination. Indeed, project scheduling is so important that a detailed schedule is sometimes a customer specified requirement. We discussed the fact that a properly designed detailed schedule can also serve as a key input in establishing the monitoring and control systems for the project. Not all project activities need to be scheduled at the same level of detail. In fact, there may be several schedules, for example, the master schedule, the development and testing schedule, the assembly schedule. These schedules are typically based on the previously determined action plan and work breakdown structure. And it is good practice to create a schedule for each major task level in the WBS that will cover the work packages. One can focus mainly on those needs to be monitored for maintaining adequate control over the project. Such packages are usually difficult, expensive or have a relatively short time frame for their accomplishment. The basic approach of all scheduling technique is to form a network of activities and events relationship that graphically portrays the sequential relationship between tasks in a project. Tasks that must precede or follow other tasks are then clearly identified in time as well as in function. Such a network is a powerful tool for planning and controlling a project and has the following benefits. It is consistent framework for planning, scheduling, monitoring and controlling the project. It illustrates the interdependency of all tasks, work packages and work elements. It denotes the time when specific individuals and resources must be available for a work on a given task. It aims in ensuring that proper communication take place between departments and functions. It determines an expected project completion date. It identifies so-called critical activities that if delayed will delay the project completion time. It also identifies activities with slack that can be delayed for specific periods without penalty or from which resources may be temporarily borrowed without harm. It determines the dates on which tasks may be started or must be started if the project is to stay on schedule. It illustrates what tasks must be coordinated to avoid resources or timing conflicts. It also illustrates which tasks may be run or must be run in parallel to achieve the predetermined project completion date. It relieves some interpersonal conflicts by clearly showing task dependencies. It may, depending on the information used, allow an estimate of probability of project completion by various dates or the date corresponding to a particular a priority probability. Network techniques 
PERT and CPM. PERT is Project Evaluation and Review Technique and CPM is Critical Path Method. With the exception of Gantt charts, the most common approach to project scheduling is the use of network techniques such as PERT and CPM. The Program Evaluation and Review Technique PERT was developed by the U.S. Navy in cooperation with Booz Allen Hamilton and the Lockheed Corporation for the Polaris Missile Submarine Project in 1958. The Critical Path Method was developed by DuPont Incorporated during the same time period. In application, PERT has primarily been used for research and development projects, the type of projects for which it was developed though its use is more common on development side of R&D than it's on the research side. Critical path method was designed for constructing construction projects and has been largely embraced by the construction industry. There are many exceptions to these generalities. The Ellie Lilly company, for example, uses CPM for its research projects. The PERT or the use of PERT was, has decreased sharply in recent years because a large majority of project management software generate CPM networks. The two methods are quite similar and are often combined for educational presentation. Originally, PERT was strictly oriented to the time element of the projects and used probabilistic time activities estimates to aid in determining the probability that a project could be completed by some given date. CPM, on the other hand, used deterministic activity time estimates and was designed to control both the time and cost aspects of a project, in particular, time-cost trade-offs. In CPM, activities can be crashed, expedited at extra cost to speed up the completion time. Both techniques identified a project-critical path with activities that could not be delayed and also identified indicated activities with slack or float that could be somewhat delayed without lengthening the project completion time. Some writers insist on strict differentiation between PERT and CPM. This is almost unnecessary. We might note that in passing the critical activities in real world projects typically constitute less than 10% of the total activities. In our examples and simplified problems uh, that we are going to discuss, the critical activities constitute a much greater portion of the total because we use smaller networks to illustrate the techniques. For almost half a century, PERT and CPM networks have been used in project management. However, in 2005, the PMI, Project Management Institute, renamed Project Management Institute 2005 PERT as ADM, Arrow Diagram Method, and CPM as PDM, Precedence diagram method. In general, we simply refer to either as network, but if we wish to refer specifically to PERT ADM network where the activities are shown as arrows on the network, we will call it AOA, activity on arrow network. And if we refer to a CPM network, critical path network, where the activities are shown as nodes, we will call it AON, activity on node network. some other terminologies that we have to get used to. Let us define some terms that will be used in our discussion for networks. Activity, a specific task or set of tasks that are required by the projects, use up resources and take time to complete. Event, the result of completing one or more activities and identifiable end state that occurs at a particular time Events use no resources. Network, the arrangement of all activities and in some cases events in a project arrayed in the original sequence and represented by arcs and nodes. This arrangement network defines the project and the activity precedence relationship. Network. Networks are usually drawn starting on the left and proceeding to the right. Arrowheads placed on the arcs are used to indicate the direction of the flow. 
that is to show the proper precedences. Before an event can be realized that is achieved, all activities that immediately precede it must be completed. These are called predecessors. Thus, an event represents an instant in time when each and every predecessor activity has been finished. Paths. The series of connected activities or intermediate events between any two events in a network. Critical. Activities, events or paths which if delayed will delay the completion of the project. A project's critical path is understood to mean the sequence of critical activities and critical events that connects the project start event to the finish event and which cannot be delayed without delaying the project. To transform a project plan into network, one must know what activities comprise the project and for each activity what its predecessor or successor are. An activity can be any of these conditions. It may have a successor but no predecessor, it may have a predecessor but no successor and it may have both predecessor and a successor. The first of these is an activity that starts a network, the second one the second ends a network. The third is in the middle. Now let's take an example of that. Now this is the start activity. It has a successor but no predecessor so it does not, doesn't have an activity which before it so it's a it will have only activities which are going to succeed it. And that would be the type 3 which has both predecessors as well as a successor activity. Predecessor activities which are before the actual activity and successor are which comes after. So it will have a successor activity. Now the type 2 is the activity which does not have a successor activity but has a predecessor activity. So it will end the network. Activities are represented here by rectangles, one form of which what is called network are called nodes with arrows to show the precedence relationship. As noted earlier, this activity or node AON notation is used for critical path method networks. When there are multiple activities with no predecessor, it is usually to show them all emanating from a single node called start. Similarly, with when multiple activities have no successor, it is usually to show them connected to a node called end. Now this is an example of a network with multiple activities and uh, predecessors and successors. It has all the three types of the activities that we just uh, talked about. The first one being activity which starts it and it has a lot of uh, successor activities but no predecessor activity. The second one is the one which ends it which does not have any successor activity but has a lot of predecessor activities and on in the center are all those activities which are the third type which have both predecessor as well as the successor activities. The interconnections depend on the technological relationship described in the action plan. For example, when one paints a room, filling small holes and cracks in the walls and masking windows and woodwork are predecessors to painting the walls. Similarly, removing curtains and blinds as well as pictures and picture hooks from the walls are predecessor to spackling and masking. It is the nature of work to be done that it determines predecessor-successor relationship. In the preceding diagram, rectangle nodes represented the activities, hence it was called activity or node network. Another format for drawing a network is activity on arrow as shown in the upcoming slide. 
Now we can see in the dish diagram the same network that we see, saw in the previous diagram, but it, uh, the method of this diagram is different. The method of this network is different. It is activity on arrow. Now all these activities A1, A, uh, 1B, 1C, 3A, 3B, 3C, 2D, these activities are represented on the arrows and not on the nodes. So it means that this is activity on arrows network method. Here the activities are shown on the arrows and the circular nodes represents the events. As noted earlier, this is the standard notation for PERT networks. If the project begins with multiple activities, they, they can all be drawn emanating from the initial node and multiple activities can terminate it in a single node at the end of the project. This is the end of the lecture. Thank you.